In history, there have been many different execution methods used to take the life of a condemned criminal. Today, some, such as electric chair, are still used, and during times of warfare, enemies would instill great fear and terror by executing people in public. For example, the Germans during World War II, inside of the Soviet Union, executed people from trees, and left them there for a while to send a clear message to the people around. But during the medieval and Tudor period in England, many people found themselves hanged, drawn and quartered at sites such as Tyburn, as many enemies of Henry VIII also made their way to the scaffold. But inside of India, there was a form of execution used by British soldiers in the army that was incredibly savage and would have led to someone being literally blown to pieces. Being blown from a gun or a cannon was a terrible and terrifying execution method used to send a clear message to the people inside of India, and it was certainly one of the most horrific execution methods used by a military in history. But what happened with it? Join us today as we find out, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The execution method of being blown from a cannon or a gun was not exclusively used by the British. It came to fruition during the 1500s, and was even used within the past 100 years. A Portuguese explorer named Francisco de Almeida in 1509 executed many people by blowing them from a gun, and it was used by other Portuguese explorers in lands where they wanted to conquer. In Mozambique, one Portuguese commander killed a number of prisoners using it, and it was a sight that many people would be haunted by until the day they died. Being blown from a gun was when a prisoner would literally be tied to the mouth of a cannon, where the cannonball would come out of and hurtle towards an enemy. So once a gun was fired, someone was literally blown to pieces, and often some of the most horrific injuries would be sustained on the unfortunate person. One man described what he saw when he saw someone being killed in this way. He said, The prisoner is generally tied to a gun with the upper part of the small of his back resting against the muzzle. When the gun is fired, his head is seen to go straight up into the air, some 40 or 50 feet. The arms fly off right and left, high up into the air, and fall at perhaps a distance of 100 yards. The legs drop to the ground, beneath the muzzle of the gun, and the body is literally blown away altogether, not a vestige being seen. It was famously used by the British when they went to different lands to conquer and colonise them. In India it was used to deal with uprisings and rebellion, and was used to put down the Indian Rebellion of 1857. Sepoys who deserted from the British side would be killed in this way, and a number did manage to help rebellions and desert from the British side. As this was seen as very shameful, using the cannon to execute was seen as ample punishment for them. It was considered an old Mughal punishment and execution method, and it was used in March 1764 against a native officer. He was caught trying to get others to defect to an enemy side, and with this he was executed using the cannon in front of his own soldiers to add an element of extra disgrace and shame. But shockingly the British even used the execution method against their own soldiers, as in 1798 an uprising occurred amongst British soldiers, and one of the ringleaders in this was arrested and was then blown from a cannon. The British used this method of killing usually against natives and locals, but this specific example was the only example of a European being killed by the British in this way. There were many more punishments used in India, including whippings, and following the Valour Mutiny of 1806, which resulted in many British soldiers and officers being killed while they slept, six people who were involved in the killing were blown from a cannon. Further executions in India were carried out by the British, and it was used to bring down the Indian Rebellion of 1857. Following this, there were scores of executions that occurred, and it was used to put people off joining the uprising. It was said that, on 8th of June, two sepoys from the 35th Light Infantry were blown from guns. 10th of June, in Ludhiana, Peshawar, some 40 from the 54th Regiment were blown from guns. On the 13th of June, 10 sepoys from the 45th Regiment were blown from guns, two hanged. The same day, in Ambala, 10 sepoys from the 54th Regiment suffered the same fate. The 26th of the same month, one was blown from a gun, one hanged and three were shot. On the 8th of July, it's assumed that captured rebels would be blown away. On the 19th, Arugabad, one was blown away, two shot. On 5th of September, Setara, six were blown away. On the 17th of September, Moulton, one was blown away, 
121, was summarily executed. On 23rd of September in Karachi, one was blown away, seven hanged and 20 deported. The local body count on court-martialed individuals then came to four blown away, 14 hanged, 22 deported and three beheadings. At the end of October, near Agra, one was blown away. On the 16th of November, Bombay, two sepoys from the 10th Regiment were blown away. Hundreds of people were executed by the British in India following and during the rebellion, and with this 44 of the rebels were executed, being blown from the cannon, but most were killed more simply and quicker, using a firing squad. It's believed though that there was some form of retribution administered by the Indian people, and that they did capture some British people and officers, and during the rebellion they may have executed them blown them from cannons of their own. But following the rebellion in 1871, 65 further people were killed being blown from guns, but it wasn't the most reliable method of killing. Throughout history, hangmen, for example, experimented with the quickest and most efficient way of taking a life, but blowing from a cannon was bloody and a messy job. A number of things could go wrong, and in 1857 it was said that from then on blank cartridges should be used in the executions, as previously at times grape shot had been used. When the cannon was fired, a number of civilians who were watching were hit by the projectiles, and many were injured, and some even had to have limbs amputated because of their injuries they sustained from simply watching the execution. Also, the British soldiers who stood by the cannon were injured by the grape shot, and flying bits of bone and flesh also caused further injury, as the bone would embed into the skin of the guards nearby. Another accident occurred using the method, as a victim slipped from the cannon just before the shot was fired. It was said that, one wretched fellow slipped from the rope, by which he was tied to the guns, before the explosion, and his arm was nearly set on fire. Whilst hanging in his agony under the gun, the sergeant applied a pistol to his head, and three times the cap snapped, the man each time wincing from the expected shot. At last a rifle was fired into the back of his head, and the blood poured out of the nose, and mouth like water from a briskly handled pump. This was one of the most horrible sights of all. I've seen death in all its forms, but never anything to equal this man's end. Being blown from a gun or cannon was a horrific way to go, and after the animals nearby would pick at the remains of the victim, and many body parts would be thrown into the air and would land anywhere, including inside the crowd. It was used in other areas around the world, and in Afghanistan it was believed that in the 1880s hunters were being killed, being fired from cannons. It was a truly harrowing method of execution, and today remains a dark stain on British history. Let's remember that those people who were rebelling against them were fed up of British colonial rule, and to impose the regime onto the people further, terror was used to stop people rebelling. There are very few execution methods throughout history that were as harrowing and terrifying as seeing someone blown to bits by a cannon. It was comparable to being hanged, drawn and quartered. It was a barbaric way that the British used to impose their reign over the locals, and they wanted to scare them off going against them. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.